Welcome to this screencast about Python functions. The screencast assumes that you already know how to code some Python, but don't know how functions work. For an example, we picked uh, quadratic equations and tried to solve them with the Python functions. So this is a quadratic equation, and these are the solutions to it. Each of the solutions is basically almost the same. So the one is minus b plus this root here, the other is minus b minus that root. So implementing this in Python should already know how it works. We need a square root, which we can find in a math library. In this case, we define the three <coughs> coefficients a, b, and c. The root, that's the b squared minus 4a times c, which is b squared minus 4a times c. And the first solution would be minus b plus this root over 2a, which is minus b plus that root over 2a, and the other solution is the same, just minus the root. So this is the other solution, and that's the only difference here, the minus. Let's see how this works if we simply run it. So we get the solutions for x1 and x2 printed to the screen, just as we ask here. So why would we need Python functions? Well, assume we want to solve this equation for different coefficients a, b, and c. So what would we do? We would basically have to copy the code over and over and adjust the coefficients the way we want them to be. Let's say 1, 6, and 3, and here let's do 2, 12, and let's say 5. And we can save it and execute it, and it would calculate the solutions three times. But this is fairly impractical. Just assume we made a little mistake, then we'd have to correct it in all three functions, here, and here, and here. So it would be much nicer if we could simply pass these values a, b, and c into the equations, and then solve them over and over again with different coefficients. So how can we do this? Let's remove the unnecessary input here. Python provides the def keyword, <coughs> which allows us to define a function. And I call our function quadratic. So now we define a function which is called quadratic. And the function takes three parameters, which are our coefficients a, b, and c. Good. And we can now remove these here. And the rest of the code stays exactly the same. Now we can call this function using quadratic of, let's say, 3, 12, or 13, and 1. It's a simple example. And save it and run it. This works, apparently. So what happened? Python did copy when we called the function. It basically jumped up here and it copied the 3 into the value for a, the 13 into the value of b, and the 1 into the value of c. So these values are copied, and then the function is executed. So what we can do now, we can call it with other values. Let's say we call it with 1, 5, and 2. Again, which is much less code and looks a lot nicer and is easier to maintain. If we run it now, it gets executed twice and works quite nice. All right, now let's, let's try to change it a little bit and not print these values, because if we print the values, we cannot use them in any other way outside of the function. So what do we have to do? We can return values, which means we can write here, return x1, x2, and these values are passed to a variable which we can assign from the function call. Let's say here we can say x1 comma x2 equals quadratic. And when we call the function now, the 3 is set to the a, the 13 to the b, and the 1 to the c. The function calculates x1 and x2. And at the end of the function, its variables x1 and x2 will be copied into these variables x1 and x2. This is important because when the function stops running, 
these variables would go out of scope and would be deleted and we cannot use them outside. So let's try this now and print x1 comma x2 to the screen and run it and it works which is nice. If we would have not assigned them here they would not be in scope so x1 and x2 would not exist here. Let's look at this and we get an issue because x1 which is the first one it finds is not defined. So we need these return values which are sent back from the function into these variables here. All right. To get a bit of a better grasp at parameter passing, let's look at this example in IPython. So this is an IPython session and I import my function now. <coughs> what happens during the import, the module is executed once, so we get the print x1 and x2. And I can use this function now from IPython. So I can run, the function name was quadratic. Uh, so I run it from within the module quadratic equation dot quadratic and I can call it with one comma six comma one and uh, and it works. All right. To illustrate the parameter passing, let's define a different function. Let's define a function add, which takes two parameters and well it adds the number and returns the result but it also prints the parameters. So add first comma second and what we do is we print the parameters so you see what happens. Print first column first and second is second. Good. We print these and then we re return first plus second. Now the function is defined and note the intent which Python use, uses to delimit blocks. <coughs> Let's call this function add 3 comma 5. The 3 will be copied to first and the 5 will be copied to second. Let's execute the function and see what happens. It says first is 3 and second is 5. So the result is 8. Now, let's try to collect the result. I call it <coughs> result equals at, let's do 5 comma 6. So what's going to happen now? The 5 will be copied into the first and the 6 will be accessible as second. So first is 5, second is 6. So the function will print first column 5 and second column 6. And the return value, 5 plus 6, which is 11, will be stored in result. Let's have a look. So first becomes 5, second becomes 6, and let's print result to see what it is. Result is 11. I hope you <coughs> you'll understand uh, Python functions when coding them yourself now. And you had fun watching this video. Thank you very much.